So this was the main entry. At its peak, people would say, Cumberland was the second largest Chinatown after San Francisco. Right. Bakeries, tailors, even a cake shop. Pretty self-contained, I understand. for anybody to come over. Obviously, there were some women, otherwise I, I wouldn't be present. <laughs> I want members of the Pioneer family. in here. Right, and you can see some of the posts still right. submerged. Right. So why swamp? That's the thing. They were viewed as marginal people. This is where you're allowed to live. I mean, so in all these houses that existed on either side of us mm -hmm. there, the great majority of the people who we're lived in this community were bachelors, mm -hmm. right? Bachelors in the sense that their wives were not with them. What kind of life did they have? You know, work, working in the mines, and then of course there were surname societies, Chinese benevolent society. Some of these were political. Freemasons. They provided a social atmosphere, right. so they would be playing modern. Chinatowns, whether it was here in Cumberland or in other places, uh, the people had a very rich life. And what activities might they engage in or have in their communities? Well, for example, like here in, in Cumberland, there was an opera house that held 400 people. Well, there was in fact more than one opera house, so you have to imagine that there was a huge number of, of people here and they filled the theaters. I know that. My grandmother, she sewed sequins on the opera costuming. Two opera houses is a very strong indication of the large number of Chinese. Like, well, wow, this was a huge Chinatown. How did everything just disappear? They had a number of fires. 